I'm uh, Master Warrant Officer Brian Boak. Uh, I was diagnosed with uh, PTSD uh, within the last two years. Corporal Retired uh, Grant Miller, 2nd Battalion Royal Canadian Regiment, uh, diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder and traumatic brain injury. My name is Tyler Mott. I'm a forward for the Ottawa Senators. I've been diagnosed with anxiety and depression. For me, it was my first session and hearing a diagnosis was probably the bottom for me. I think the, the time leading up to it was probably when I was connected from physically and mentally the worst. I didn't, you know, I didn't want to be active, I didn't want to play, I didn't want to do some of these things that I wasn't used to doing. But hearing a diagnosis, I think, was a bit of a, almost a culture shock for me. Yep. And when I shared my story uh, publicly for the first time, was through, again through hockey talks with Vancouver and I didn't like the idea of sharing it for myself. Everyone like the questions and some of it was based on me and I was like, I, I'm not sitting here doing this for me. It helps me to know that I could be helping someone else. And I may never know that I am, but at least if I'm trying to help the stigma, sitting here talking with you guys, being a part of this and hopefully helping others, I think gives me a sense of hope for myself and, yeah. and for the community in general. Yeah, I, I didn't look after myself after Afghanistan or after any of the other deployments I went on. It's, it's very much a 24-7 stressful environment that you're in, you know, it's, 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 not, it's not ideal. And then we end up being in uh, where we think that we're alone and, and nobody else could possibly be feeling the same way that we are. And yet, I just push through and push through and then you know 10 years later I go off and I decide okay something's wrong I'm angry I'm sitting on the couch I don't want to do anything I, I didn't even know what was going on with me and I didn't seek any kind of help until uh, what am I at two years ago I had no idea I was just angry all the time or I'd sit in a chair and just zone out and I, I wasn't engaged um, luckily my wife is nice enough to put up with me and uh, she said you know you might want to go talk to somebody. When I got my, uh, my diagnosis it was a like you, got your, you have uh, moderate to severe uh, post-traumatic stress disorder and I went really? And they're like yeah we're kind of we're kind of surprised that you were surprised because we kind of read everything about you here. Um, I was uh, a part of the battle group in, uh, in Afghanistan in 2010, and uh, I hit an IED in Afghanistan in August of 2010. And um, my fire, turn, fire team partner, he died from that IED. So through months of surgeries, uh, I came back to, uh, to Canada, and I didn't know what anxiety was. I heard about it. I heard of people having depression, but it was like, for myself, I had no idea what was going on. <clears throat> and I thought that at that time, especially coming back to Canada, that I was the only person I felt this way, and so on and so forth. Um, and um, when a lot of, when everybody else came back from a tour that I worked with, it's, everybody had issues, but nobody wanted to talk about it. So we were all going down this mental health road on our own, where in the military, like hockey, it's, you never, you didn't, you never, you didn't win anything alone or lose anything alone. It's always the team, the team, the right. team. And it took everybody a long time to realize that. Well, how are we going to? You know, I call it like the war on mental health. Well, you're not going to win it alone, right? So, and that's the big thing, as as I see it, right? So, well, I guess the mental health community has done a good job at diminishing the stigma, right? Shrinking it, taking some of that stigma's power away from maybe its control over the community. Mm -hmm. um, again, I think us just being here having this conversation um, probably wouldn't have happened five, 10 years ago. Definitely not. Definitely not. <laughs> so I think, I think that's power in itself. The community is the big thing, right? Yeah. So um, I think you guys, well, you have like the SENS alumni and all that, so we always have each other's uh, sex. One thing for me was uh, just being diagnosed with anxiety and depression was I kept, the, early on I kept asking the question like how and why, right? Um, obviously with, I'm assuming with most 
uh, PTSD diagnosis, there's there's a clear why or how for, in some cases. Generally. Maybe, maybe yeah, generally, not, yeah. Uh, I, um, but for me, with just the diagnosis of, you know, I, I've had my ups and downs in life. I, I lost uh, three friends in a year early on in high school um, in, in different situations. Um, so like there were some challenges, but not to say I lived a, a tough life. I'm very blessed to do what I do today and, and to have taken the path that I have. Um, but I, I asked myself, you know, why? In my road to recovery, I was trying to get back to the 100% of the person I was before, um, before I deployed overseas and I was running marathons, it was like best shape of my life kind of thing and it's like with all my injuries that when they were permanent, it's like you're trying to be the better person you are right now. The person you were before you were wounded in combat is dead and gone, mm -hmm. right? This is the person you are now and it took me a very long time to actually realize that. Yeah. I, I would say 10 years kind of thing, so. I started on Facebook and I started posting them. Went and got help today. Yeah. And I had so many people, like friends of mine from the military going, really? Like you had something wrong? Cause I feel like that all the time. And I'm, well, go get help. Go take a look at yourself and figure it out. If not for you, for your family. Since I came open about it, they've now reached out to all the programs that are out there, like Soldier On, but, but especially things like uh, the Veterans Affairs programs that these guys didn't know existed or were too ashamed to go apply for. And now they think it's okay because, well, somebody else did it. It's, it's not selfish to take care of yourself, right? And again, being a, playing a team sport for a long time, being a part of teams as you guys were, there, selfish is a word you don't want. Yeah, you don't want to be called selfish, right? Yeah. But there are times and there are ways that you can be a se selfish to take care of yourself in order to help your team, yeah. right? And it's not during games for me, right? That's never a time to be selfish at the ranks, never a time to be selfish, but I'm away from the rank. So there's times where I need to be a little bit selfish to take care of myself so that I can be best for my team. Another stigma when it comes to mental health is people comparing their, uh, their mental health to other people's. So it's like, oh, this guy has, or girl has had like a traumatic, um, yeah, had traumatic experiences in their life where it was kind of public, but, and it seems like they're doing fine. So if they're doing fine, then I'm doing fine. Well, no. Yeah, like you have PTSD, moderate, severe, so do I. Yeah. Your experience was much, much different than mine. You're, you're an infantier on the ground. Your, your buddies are going up. I was in a different environment where I had to you know, say who needs to be taken care of and uh, kinetically and, and, and then watch it all. Very different experiences, but it still affects you similarly. People say, yeah, you don't have to go through this alone or you're not, you're not alone in your fight or whatever, but you know, to an extent you are, right? We're the only ones that are feeling what we feel, but you don't have to, your environment doesn't have to be alone. You don't have to, to sit and solve the problem yourself. You, no. have, you have community, you have you know, professionals. If you know someone who could be struggling, it's to just be there, be available, be open. Um, if you're someone who, who is struggling um, and maybe looking for help, I think it's a, it can be as slow or as fast of a process as you want. If you're ready to jump in and see a psychologist or see somebody um, to take that step by all means. I think it's very important. Even if you come out of it one session and you know it's not for you or whatever, at least you, 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 you took that step and yet the steps in the future will be easier.